So today is a hot day today in Florence, 86 degrees, August 25th, 2016. So on a hot day, what is the solar, what is the solar, how much is the solar panel taking in? Uh, today it's taking in 15.2 volts. That reading is in amps, 100% battery full. So yeah, some of you might be asking about how's the solar system been doing, since how has it been performing since I've had it in the truck camper. And it's, it's been good, I think, to be expected. Uh, I'm still using the factory Group 27 interstate batteries, so I don't really have a whole lot of amp hours that I should, I should be having. Uh, one of my things is to upgrade the batteries to some 6-volt batteries. And basically what's, happen, what's happening is I'll get you know, I'll pull in some really, like on a day like today, this is a really good Sunday today. Pulling in 15 volts is a really good day today. Um, and then at night, or actually not at night, but when I wake up in the morning, my batteries are around 10.8 volts. That's generally where they are. So I'm assuming that that's normal. Uh, I know that there's a lot of different settings that you can do with this controller and I'm still learning how to how to best use it. I really don't really know how to utilize get the most out of it. I need to get some more uh, some more training on it. Great. The batteries eventually to get the most out of this solar system. So I do know that, but for right now, it for, not, for right now it is working. I have uh, been on the solar. I've been staying at the park since uh, about the middle of April and I have not plugged in at all to electrical power. Um, I really haven't had any any real issues. Uh, like I said, the batteries, they, they draw down uh, at night, and then I get up in the morning, and the batteries are around 10.8 volts, and then I will, you know, then they will charge during the day. So, you know, on a good day, I can get up to about 13 volts, and there's a, I may be not saying this correctly. I mean, this 15.2 figure, this is what the batteries are reading right now. It may not be the figure that the batteries are pulling in from the sun, but that's where the batteries are reading right now. I think that's the accurate way of, of, of stating that. So, so yeah, let, uh, let me just kind of, I'm going to go outside and I mean, I'm sure you guys have seen the solar panel, but I really haven't done too many videos talking about the solar, so I'm just going to step outside and show you the, the outside of the panel and also the, the battery compartment again. So here's just another outside view of the solar panel up there. It's 160 watt solar panel, mono, mono crystalline solar panel. It's worked really good. I haven't had, haven't had any issues with it. I have had some thoughts about adding more solar. No surprise. Everyone that goes solar panels, they always are, uh, you know, you can never have enough solar. You're always wanting more solar. There is, there just isn't, isn't enough that you can possibly have. There's no, no, no limit with it. So I may be looking this winter at adding an additional panel onto it, possibly adding a panel. My roof, the way that my roof is there on this camper, it's a little tricky to add panels. The This panel that I have up here right now, it will be good. The way it is mounted will be fine for traveling down the road. That's what you have to think about, you know, mounting these panels is, you know, wind resistance and, and that sort of a thing. So the way this is kind of tucked low on the roof, uh, I think it's going to be fine traveling down the road, so I don't have a whole lot of room uh, other places on the roof. So there is a possibility that I may consider going with a portable, uh, like a suitcase portable solar panel. Po I possibly may do that because for situations where you're going to be camped in one location for say you know two weeks at a time or a month that works great uh, you know it's portable and and so it has a lot of uh, uses with it so I may have to consider going with that type of panel they do have those um, folding solar panels where they kind of stick to the roof and that's another option and I'm sure that the technology is you know coming along with those I'm not really a big fan of those I I like the, the permanently mounted um, you know, monocrystalline panels like this, you know, tur turn the key and go. I don't want to have to mess with anything, so I'm more of a, a believer in just, I like things that are turn the key and go. I don't want to have to do a lot of setup and take down and break down and 
Uh, I'm not interested in that sort of thing. So, so anyway, that's those are some of my thoughts today about the solar system and the solar panels. Let's check out the battery compartment here again. So again, these are two Group 27 batteries. This is the I'll just kind of call this the number two battery, the second battery. There isn't anything attached to this one other than just a positive and a negative wire going to the other battery. This is the main battery compartment. There's a whole mess of wires going everywhere. Every wire in here is important and uh, unfortunately because of the way the sun is today. Uh, oh, there you go. Now you can probably be able to see it. There's the shunt that I have installed. Uh, this is just a, a block that you screw to the battery, uh, the battery compartment there, the battery plastic battery compartment tray. Uh, I haven't checked the water level on these batteries. It's probably been about a month, so it's a good thing to do that. And checking the water level in the batteries is something that I can do without having to remove the batteries from the camper. Uh, my friend Wayne Hallady, YouTube channel Wayne Hallady, uh, when I was in Yuma, Arizona, he uh, gave me an instruction on how to go about doing that. Uh, there's a uh, like a, I just call them like a turkey baster. They're the, I forget what they're called, but they're just a, a little thing, and you can you know baste. You just take the, the amount of water that you want to use. You want to use um, not regular tap water, but I can't think of the name of it right now. It may may come may come to me here. I'll probably edit it, edit it in the video. Um, so yeah, you want to use. Um, that type of the special type of it's not special it's just it's it's not tap water so you put that tap water that water in in those in those batteries and you know you don't want to overfill them you just want to put just the amount in but so that's how you go about doing that so yeah that's basically the battery compartment you know I'm I am seriously considering going with the lifeline AGM batteries the price on those batteries, if I buy them through AM Solar, the price is they're about $349 each. So it's quite an investment in those batteries, but for you know full-time RVing with a solar system, uh, having money invested in batteries is money well spent. Okay, uh, the batteries are uh, you know they are the most important part of your entire system. So I will probably be buying a set of batteries through AM Solar. I won't have to pay any sales tax and shopping around online. It didn't seem like I could get that much better of a deal. Of course, you know, you got to think about shipping and handling. And there's a possibility if I head south, when I head south this winter, that I may be able to score a little bit of a better deal. But the Lifeline AGM batteries are uh, really coming coming out as the one that I'd like to go with. Uh, only mostly for the purposes of they're maintenance free. There is no water you have to add to them. You do nothing other than may monitor the batteries and make sure that they are not discharging. Very very important. But they have a very long uh, lifespan. Talking with other uh, owners, Wanderlust man Chris has them and uh, he uh, swears by them. So there is an investment, but it's you know to me it's 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 money well spent. You know if you're if you're going to do this, do it right, spend the money, invest the money, and it will pay for itself later. Uh, so so that's really all that I have to say today, guys, about the about solar. This is my uh, my solar update here, August 2016. Thank you for watching. So as far, as far as what type of an, an inverter am I using to say, say recharge, charge my, um, or power up my laptop, um, I'm just using one of these GoPower 175 watt power inverter. Just, uh, you know, they, they hook into, I've just got this block here and I just plug it into there and then I've got that plugged into, uh, right down here you can see this is uh, just a 12 volt port. That's where the power antenna is. So I've just got it plugged in there. Um, one of the things that I like to do is add an additional 12 volt plug in plug to this camper. There is only one in the camper from the factory, so I would like to add an additional one, which will be pretty simple to do. Just tap into that existing wire that's there for that one and just run it to another plug. So yeah, this is just a, uh, a little power power inverter that I have. I did attach a, a few strips of Velcro to the uh, inverter so that um, it won't slide around as much while in travel and movement, so kind of another little uh, 
little thing that I've done. But yeah, this little guy, it works great for just you know using uh, using it for my laptop. Um, you know, 175 watts. So that's my little power inverter.